Okay, let's do one more example about calculating the delta H of a reaction. So the change in enthalpy using bond dissociation energy a chart. And let's remember that to do the calculation, we need to break bonds. So we need to add the bond dissociation energy of the bonds we break. And then we're going to subtract the energy, um, bond dissociation energy of the bonds that form. Because remember that when bonds form, energy is released. So that's why we have that sign. And we need to calculate delta H in order to be able then to understand what is the impact in this equation of give free energy. So now let's do one more reaction. And here I have CH2, CH2 here. So that's an alkene. Then I have here water. And now I have CH3, CH2, OH. Right here, notice that I have um, one molecule here, another molecule here, and we have another molecule. So we're adding two molecules to form one. So this is a type of reaction called addition. Okay? That particular one is a hydration reaction. Now I'm going to redraw this, showing um, the bonds. And so let's say be more explicit, I'm going to do H, H. Right now I have here a double bond. I'm going to say H, H. And now I'm going to draw water as this, more Lewis-like. And here I'm going to have H, H, H. So a new bond here. And now H, H, O, H. So let's identify the bonds that we're breaking and the bonds that we form. So here, you're breaking only the pi bond. And you're breaking one of these bonds, and you're forming two new bonds. So this one is new. Let's throw it in the other color. Uh, okay. This. I hope it shows it's different. And let's show the other bond that's new. Let me just redraw that. I'm going to... This is kind of not so clear. So, okay, H, and then my new bond here with OH. So, this is what I'm adding. This molecule is this molecule. See, what did I do? I added an H and an OH across the double bond. What we broke one pi bond. And one sigma bond here between oxygen and hydrogen, and we have formed two new sigma bonds, which are this one that we show below in pink. Now let's do the math here to estimate the delta H of the reaction using this. So delta H of the reaction will be, I'm breaking a pi bond, so I'm getting my numbers here from the page. Um, so breaking one pi bond, is uh, 251 kjoule per mole. Then I need to break this bond. And this bond is uh, 498 kjoule per mole. And now energy is released here. When I form this carbon-hydrogen bond, this will be negative 435. And also energy is released when I form this bond, so preceded by a negative sign. This is going to be negative 381 kJ per mole. When I add that up, the net result is negative 66. Um, well, let's say negative 67. I'm going to round those up. Negative 67 kJ per mole. What this means is that heat is released. So again, there is a negative sign. This reaction is exothermic. Now, in regards to that equation, we know then that this term is has a negative sign. So now, 
we uh, we want to know if this reaction is product favor or or not or um, product or reactant favor. So now I'm going to see if I can predict at least a sign of the entropy term. So notice that in the reactant side, I have two multiple molecules, say A and B, and I'm producing C. So the number of um, molecules is less now on the right than it is on the left. So entropy had decreased in going from reactant to products. So the sign here is negative for the entropy. Again, this process, the addition reaction, is has a negative change in entropy. Entropy is decreasing. Now, overall, when we look at the um, question about what is that? How do we know the sign of delta G? Uh, when we study engine chem before, remember, well, we talk about spontaneous process when a reaction is product favor. In that, we associate with a negative um, change in give free energy. So we want for a reaction to be uh, product favor, we want this number to be negative. This I want. So, but notice that here you have a sign, negative sign preceding this. So all of that, all of that term is actually positive. So we have two things with opposite side. This term is positive, negative times a negative, and here that's negative. So for that reaction to be product favor, in other words, to have a delta G negative, I need this term to be larger than that. So that reaction having, say, more significant delta H, that change, larger than this term. And so that will depend on the temperature. So normally when we do addition reactions, we work at lower temperatures to have this term being smaller than that. But the more exothermic the reaction is, chances are we will have uh, more ne um, a negative delta G. But again, experimentally, we can work with temperature to make additional reactions being product favor. Because again, we have one positive term and one negative. We want this term, the delta H, to be larger so that at the end, we have a negative delta G. Okay, so here we have predicted the sign of delta H, and we have learned how to do the calculation for um, the enthalpy of the reaction using bond dissociation energy.